Hello ladies and gentlemen, Devin from Decon here, and this is the Matebook D from Huawei. In 2018, Huawei released two new laptops, including their more flagship professional laptop and the Matebook X Pro. And the second one was a more consumer-friendly, entry-level type laptop and the Matebook D, which I have right here. So what makes this laptop special? There's a few things. Firstly is the price. This laptop is nearly $1,000 cheaper than the Matebook X Pro, and it can be had for less than $600 right now on Newegg. Secondly, this is an AMD-based laptop, so you're getting the mobile variants of their Ryzen processor line, as well as their Vega graphics. And lastly, the overall build quality and overall quality of parts is very, very nice for this price point. The Mapic D is constructed from aluminum. It's smooth and slightly cool to the touch. It's also very sturdy as the top lid has little or no flex to it. And the hinge is also great as it rotates just past 180 degrees. The screen has relatively thin bezels and houses a 14 inch touchscreen display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Color accuracy is fairly poor, as sRGB accuracy is 64%, and NTSC and Adobe RGB are 46 and 48% accurate. So those numbers look scary, right? And they should, because it's indicative of this panel's inability to display colors accurately. But this is not going to be a big deal unless you're looking to use this laptop to do any kind of professional work, such as editing videos or photos. However, in everyday use, such as when watching YouTube videos, Netflix, or using any other application, this display is going to look very, very nice to the naked eye. And those inaccuracies aren't going to shine through unless you actually test the display. So included is a 720p web camera, and overall I think it looks pretty nice. It's not nearly as nice as some of the ones found on the Pixel devices, but it's not nearly as bad as the ones found on MacBooks either. So if you're a user of the web camera, I think you're going to really enjoy this one. Okay, let's move on to the keyboard real quick. It's a full-size backlit keyboard, and I think most people are really going to enjoy it. I personally did not. I found it to be a bit on the mushy side. I found the key travel to be a bit low for my taste, and the backlight itself is rather poor as well, as it only has two levels of adjustment. Luckily, the trackpad is excellent, however, as it's using Windows Precision drivers. It's a very responsive, has a nice click to it, and overall it's just a joy to use. The speakers are located adjacent to the keyboard and also on the bottom as well. So Huawei is using a pretty unique design here. They've actually split the frequency load between two different locations. So your mids and highs are being taken care of by your tweeters up top, and the lows are being taken care of by the woofers on the bottom. In terms of loudness, it reaches a maximum of 84 decibels when at listening position. The bottom of the laptop just has their generic rubber feet in each corner, and also the A4 mentioned speaker grills as well. There's also nine screws holding the base cover in place and once we remove those we're able to access the internals. And as mentioned before we have a Ryzen 5 2500U processor right here. Adjacent to that we have 8GB of DDR4 RAM and just below that is our solid state storage. This is the only user replaceable part in the entire laptop and it's an M.2 drive which is super nice because there's only one screw keeping it in place which makes the entire upgrade process that much more user friendly. And taking up nearly the entire bottom half of the case is our battery, and it's a 7,410 milliamp hour battery. Okay, let's shift our focus back to the processor real quick. The single core performance of the Ryzen 5 is about on par with Intel's i5-8250U chip. And multi-core performance is nice, but it's not nearly as impressive as the i5 chip from Intel, which provides about 50% better performance. With general use, the Matebook's going to handle anything you throw at it, whether it be word processing applications, internet browsing, or Netflix, it's going to handle all of that stuff with ease. And it's more than capable of handling more demanding applications such as Adobe's Photoshop or Premiere. In fact, this entire video was edited on this laptop in 4K without any proxy setup, and it handled it beautifully. Obviously, render times are going to be slower than your desktop counterparts, but the fact that you can not only edit videos, but 4K videos, on this laptop at this price point, it's pretty special. Huawei has included AMD's Vega 8 mobile graphics, and I must say the gaming performance on this laptop is pretty astounding for what it is. I initially wanted to test three of my favorite indie games out, Inside, Life is Strange, and Oxenfree, and they all perform beautifully at 1080p, with average frame rates over 37. And like I said, initially I was only going to test those three games, but this got me thinking, can this actually handle more demanding AAA titles? So I decided to try Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, ReCore, and also The Witcher 3. 
And as expected, it didn't go that well. In 1080p, the frame rates got no higher than 20 FPS, and there was a lot of stuttering happening and a lot of environmental pop-in taking place. And overall, it's just not a very enjoyable experience. So I decided to drop the resolution to 720p, and this allowed for a much more enjoyable experience. The stuttering was gone, there's no more environmental pop-in, and the average frame rates nearly doubled. And to be honest, I wasn't expecting this type of gaming performance from a laptop with integrated graphics. I mean, this is not a gaming laptop in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't have a beefy processor, it doesn't have a dedicated graphics card, nor does it have any like fancy cooling architecture either, it's just your basic laptop. And the fact that you can get console-like frame rates from the Huawei Matebook is pretty awesome. Overall, the laptop stays relatively cool and quiet, but the fan does kick on occasionally. During more intensive use, such as when editing or gaming, the fan is pretty much on the entire time and it's fairly loud. Battery life and general use is also great. While strictly watching Netflix, I was able to get 7 hours and 25 minutes at maximum brightness, and 9 hours and 20 minutes at minimum brightness. When I absolutely stressed the laptop as much as I could by connecting it to an external monitor while I was editing, I got around 3 hours and 11 minutes. However, with the Matebook in isolation at minimum brightness, I was able to get just over 10 hours. Overall, the Matebook D represents an excellent value at its price point. The fact that you're able to edit 4K videos and game at console-like frame rates is pretty special. However, if you're looking to use this for any professional work, I'd recommend getting a color accurate external monitor just to make up for the shortcomings of the panel on this laptop. If you're a student, on a budget, or you're just looking for the best bang for your buck, the Matebook D is a solid choice. Well, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please send me your likes. If you enjoy my content, send me your subs, and as always, thank you for stopping by, I'll see you next time.